Hi, it's Linda from CreativePLR.com. I've shown you in previous videos how to make seamless paper, and it seems like a lot of work. Sometimes you just want a really good-looking background paper. And what I've done is, this is my fall color palette for a project that I'm working on. And I got these, I'll show you, let me delete these. Just turn them off so you don't see the color. And I'll show you, I found some color palettes that I really like. I found three of them. I wanted more versions of brown, um, different color choices and lighter color choices for brown, other than just brown, brown, lighter brown, 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 brown. And so I found these three and I put them on a canvas. And this is where I got these colors. So see this layer that I have here right now that has nothing on it. I'll turn this one off. Nothing on that. And so you could just go over to your color picker, your eyedropper tool, and you could say like, well, I really like this orange. And you click on it and you'll notice that it did select that orange. You go over to your paint bucket and this is why I leave space um, on my color palette in the background so I could just do that. And so now I've added that orange. Now I think I already have that orange. I'll slide it up here. Nope. Okay, so sometimes you just want a background um, color, something that has some kind of pattern to it, but nothing that's overwhelming like big florals, uh, big diamonds, leaves. You want something that's maybe a little more abstract, has some texture to it. And that's easy to achieve in Photoshop because they have some great filters. So I'm gonna go out and some papers that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica, and I will say that these are the least likely papers that I would use. And so let's just try this one. And I just drag it over on top. Now, the first thing I noticed before I hit the check mark is it doesn't quite fill my space. It's a little short. So I'm going to make sure that it's there on all four edges before I hit the check mark. And now you're thinking, well, that doesn't even look like fall. The rest of my colors are very fallish. This doesn't even look like fall. So this setting here where it says normal, um, I'm going to go, you can try different things like lighten, screen, color dodge, and it does change the color. I'm going to click overlay and immediately all of those blues are gone and it looks more like fall, doesn't it? And then I can turn that color off and pull up the orange. The yellows just never look very good. It almost looks like uh, you're looking through a haze. Um, the browns look good. Even the greens look good. So you could use any of these for a yellows don't look good. Okay. You could use any of these as a background paper. So that's one way of doing it. And you might be thinking, okay, if I'm going to use that for cover, that's really overwhelming. That's too much going on. And so I'm going to delete that one or I could just turn it off. And then I'm gonna go back to another paper, um, not quite like the first one. This one has got a lot more texture in it, and like before, I wonder if my pixels are a little off on that background slide, that's why these are off. Okay, so this has a lot more texture in it, not quite so many lines, but we can do the same thing. We can go up where it says normal, we can say overlay, and immediately it changes the color and it's really pretty. When I do that orange, I have a really pretty cover. A lot of texture on it, but nothing to distract the eye. You could put, uh, you could use edges of this for the top and the bottom of your stationery on your pages. You could use a border all around. You could use, and it wouldn't detract from what's in the center because there's not a lot of lines for your eyes to follow. It's just seeing the texture. Let's play with, let's see some of the other colors. Uh, yellow is just a really hard one, although that's not bad. Brown, brown, you get more color. The green is very pretty. So let's go back up to the top one and let's try some of the other things, like soft light looks almost like a watercolor effect. Hard light, the colors are brighter and sharper. Vivid, um, you're getting more color and less detail. Linear, pen light. And you notice the lines that we have there from between one color and another are kind of flowing. Hard mix, now it's just very surprising. 
And we could try difference, exclusion, subtract, and divide. So there's a lot of different filters that you could try. And I'm going to go back to overlay. And one other thing that you can do, see where it says uh, opacity up here? You could actually turn that down and then try it. And you'll notice that you're still getting the texture for a great background, but it's not as quite as bright and harsh. So that's an easy way for you to change up. Let's try both of them. Oh, that doesn't work at all. That's an easy way for you to change up your covers of an ebook, um, any kind of journal or planner, even a PLR journal or planner. I know a lot of times they supply covers, but other covers, when they supply them, then other people are going to have those same covers. So you might want to swap out the background uh, and keep their graphics. It's to swap out the background and give yours a really different look. I hope this was helpful. Until next time, keep creating.